What's up, everybody? What's up? I, <laughs> I just got off of another stream with a, a friend of mine and in the uh, the uh, lead attorney's mastermind, uh, Miss Mortgage Boss. The Mortgage Boss is is just uh, wrapping up her stream right now. So you get to excuse my tardiness and my lateness. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that is already here. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. I'm trying to get some things set up. So I'm a little struggle streaming already. But let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let me see who we have in the chat. Let me see who we have in the chat already. All right. We have Maggie, the substitute teacher. Thank you, Maggie, for coming and joining me today. Thank you so much. Maggie says she is coming in with the likes. Um, so please hit that like button. Join her in, in liking the, the stream today. We're going to get some we're going to get some work done today, actually. We're going to get some work done. I don't think I've done a stream like this about how to set up um, business credit or how to set your business up so that you are in the best possible position to get business credit in a while. So I want to go ahead and do that. We are closing the, the year out. A lot of you are thinking about how you want to start the new year, how you want to get your business off the ground. Um, we, uh, they say that we're in a recession or something like that. And so you're like, how, what are some other ways that I can um, make some, some money or bring some income into the home and starting a business, a home-based business is one of those. And I'm going to uh, talk about how you can get set up uh, for business credit and get a little bit more funding to help you launch your business. Who else do we have in the chat? We have Mr. CKB. He was over at um, the Mortgage Bosses uh, Live as well. I think he might be on right now um, speaking to her. So um, thank you, Mr. CKB, for coming through comments and thank you so much and we have uh life lessons for men how you doing life lessons for men another another uh good content creator out of the uh the mastermind i thank you so much for coming over here and supporting me um in this live stream who else do we have we have this uh we have kelly and kelly says this is the universe because i just started my business and i don't know how to start building my credit you were in the right place, Kelly. That's what we're going to talk about here today. Excuse me. I'm bumping up, up against the mic and everything. Um, but yes, you are in the you are in the correct place. We're going to go over this step by step. Once I get everything um, going here, we're going to go step by step on how we can do that, making sure that you're setting your business up right, especially since you said you just started it. So we want to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes in that process. And if we did, then this is a good time to go back and kind of correct them before those mistakes cost us money in the long run. So you're definitely in the right place. And thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And what do we have already? Oh, Maggie, you are the best. Listen, 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 listen. Maggie, the substitute teacher, has one of the best YouTube channels on YouTube, right? She, What does she do? Now, is she a teacher? No. But what she does is she substitutes, substitutes different foods while she's cooking, right? So Maggie is living healthier. She's making better choices about foods and she's teaching us how we can substitute uh, some of the foods that we eat. We can substitute some of the ingredients to make them better for us, uh, to make them healthier for you, uh, healthier for us. And also so that and they're still like they still taste good. And she's doing that. She goes live almost every single day in her kitchen and she is cooking up. She is whipping the pots um, and, and making great, great things. So please go over and check out her channel. Um, if you're uh, if you just like good food, honestly, it's not even about, you know, the, you know, healthy and everything like that. But if you like good food, Maggie's cooking it. Trust me. Trust me on that. So thank you, Maggie, for coming through with this, the super sticker. I really, really appreciate you on that. Um, who else we got? Oh, yeah. Life lessons. I am struggle streaming already, but we're going to get into this. I'm sorry. I was I was just on that other live that live stream trying to support a mortgage boss. And she had a really, really good topic about people uh, making three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and they're still living paycheck to paycheck. Make it make sense. Like make that make sense. And she was going through the numbers and she was breaking those down on how this person is living paycheck to paycheck. And we identified some a few things um, that they probably could have cut um, and, and won't be in that situation because I don't know. I don't know how comfortable a person can be living paycheck to paycheck. But many of us are in that situation, right? Um, it, the, whether we're making 350 um, a year or we're making, you know, just 50K a year or, you know, $25,000 a year. A, a lot of us are still in that situation. So check out the Mortgage Bosses um, channel. She was just live. She may still even be live right now. Um, check her out and check out that topic she's talking about. Who else do we have? 
Who else do we have? It says, can we come back to rewatch this live? I'm at work and I want to make sure I'm taking notes. Of course, Autumn, always come back. This live will be posted. You'll be able to uh, come back, rewatch it. You can rewind, fast forward, whatever, whatever you want to on this live. But we'll definitely be uh, going through step by step and how to uh, and how to uh, set up your business for business credit. So thank you for coming through. Who else we have? We have Tyrone Jones or Tyron Jones, Tyron Jones. So this video is perfect timing. I'm ready to, I'm ready for the content on building business credit. All right. I won't hold it up anymore. I will not hold it up. He says, also, can you give alternatives to business credit? If your personal credit credit isn't the best, we'll talk about it. Um, Tyron, I promise you and how to get some funny. All right. All right. Let's get into it. Whew. I probably was talking like a hundred miles an hour right then. Cause I was just coming down, but Okay. Like I said, this is the end of the year. Um, a lot of us are thinking about how we're going to make 2023 work for us. And a lot of times um, towards the end of the year, a lot of people say, hey, you know, next year I'm going to start my own business. Right. And that's what we want you to do. We want to start our own businesses. We want to work for ourselves. We want to bring more money into our households um, to help us get to the place that we want to be in life. That's all well and good. I support it. I want everyone to um, at, least, at least explore entrepreneurship. But when it comes to starting a business, a lot of times people don't know, like starting a business can be costly, right? And many of us don't have the cash on hand or, or the money on hand that we need to actually uh, start that business. If we need new equipment, maybe we need supplies, maybe we need you know inventory or something like that. We don't have it, so how can we get it? And one of the ways that we can get that is by utilizing business credit. And I talk about this um, ad nauseum to, on my channel within different videos, but people don't understand just that setup piece. Before you start applying for any type of loan, any type of credit card, any type of grants, the setup of your business is so vital because that can make or break whether or not you get approved for something. Whether or not you get approved for a loan, whether your business is, you know, going is, is in the best shape to get um, approved for some type of business credit. Now, business credit, as I define it, is any credit that you receive, um, whether it's a loan, a loan is a, is a type of credit. Someone's giving you money, um, whether it's a credit card, um, whether it's vendor uh, credit, any type of credit your business receives. Um, it's called, in my definition, is business credit because you're, you're still going to need the same foundation when it comes to that. All right. So what's the first thing when we're talking about business credit? What's the one of the first things that, you know, that we should really like keep in mind? And I always say that the first thing that we should be keeping in mind here, I go struggle streaming already. Did I, did I, boom, here we go. So one of the first things you want to think about when you're starting your business and making sure that you are um, put setting it up correctly is you want to think about the name of your business. What are you calling your business? Because honestly, the name can reveal a lot and we want it to reveal a lot. Right. We want the name to, you know, represent the business in some way, shape or form. But there's some industries, some businesses that banks and lenders and um, even uh, vendors will not loan to, will not give credit to. Um, and I talk about, you know, they're called high risk industries. And a lot of those are industries are, you know, marijuana, for one thing. I did a whole video about, you know, starting a marijuana business. That's a high risk industry. You're not going to get a lot of banks like your Wells Fargo's and your your um, Bank of America's and all these major banks. They're not going to lend to a marijuana business. Right. Because marijuana is not federally um, legal just yet. Yes. Certain states have legalized it and are going to legalize it. But as a as a nation as a whole, on the federal level, it is not legalized. You are high risk. Right. So, um, so what else is high risk? Um. Multi-level marketing um, companies, you know, uh, a lot of people say like the little pyramid schemes, whatever. If it's legit for you, then it's legit for you. Those are high risk industries. A lot of people lose a lot of money in that, you know, trying to bring people in and having them bring other people in. Um, that is a risky uh, business setup. Right. So those those can be considered high risk. I'm trying to see if I can pull up my uh, high risk slide. Yep. Here it is. Boom. 
What else can be considered high risk? We already talked about marijuana, CBD, that type of thing. Firearms, guns, okay? That is a high risk industry. So much regulation around them that it is high risk for major banks and lenders. I mean, you will have to be like formidable in this industry in order for you to get that type of credit. But as a startup business, no one knows about you. Yeah, that's going to be high risk for you. We already talked about the marketing, multi-level marketing, even like mail marketing, um, things like that. That's considered high risk. Subscription boxes. People are like subscription boxes. Yes, those can be considered high risk because a lot of people, when they order a subscription box or something like that, they'll cut them off after about three or four months, right? Those types of startups are considered high risk. The travel industry, if you're trying to open up a travel agency, that's considered high risk. So when I bring this back to the first step and we're talking about a name, we want to make sure that a, that the name that you pick for your business doesn't reflect one of these high risk industries. Right. So you don't want to name your business um, the smoke shop. Right. That's going to it's going to bring more attention to what type of business is this. Right. Um, you don't want to name your business something like um, I think on here as well. Let me pull it back up again, guys. Oh. I had to stream. Let me pull this back up again. Um, you don't want to have like, you know, guns are us, right? The smoke shop. Um, also with um, high risk industries are like um, your uh, casinos um, and things like that. You want to make sure that the business name is very like general because there are things that you can do when the business name is, is, is general. You can pivot into so many different types of industries or you can um, really kind of mask so somewhat, not like fully, right? Because you still have NYX codes and stuff like that. But you can really uh, kind of mask what the actual business is about. So I always say use a business name that may just be more general. So if I had if I had a cosmetics company, right, and I'm selling lipstick um, or something like that, um, let's just say I'm selling lipstick. But later on down the line, my lipsticks do so well that I want to sell you know, um, blush and, and nail polish or anything else. Instead of my company being named something like Lipsticks R Us, I might name the company um, Ties Cosmetics. It's like a general name, right? And then it allows me to kind of pivot and go into different types of um, industries or different sub um, industries under the cosmetics realm, right? But just think about like Ties Cosmetics going into like uh, baking, right? You're going to be like, uh, uh, how is that that company, this cosmetic company associated with baking? So baking, right? Goods and, and, and cookies and pies and cakes and stuff like that. So you want to make sure that you allow your business room to grow um, within this industry. And sometimes you might want to pivot into something um, different. So you always want to... Um, so you want to make sure that you you have a, a general name, a broad name for the business. And, and this is the name that you're going to use when you go to the state and you register with your um, secretary of state. That's the name that you want to use, that general name. You can always have a DBA, which is doing business as, which is like nicknames for your company. So if I had Ties Cosmetics, but, you know, I, I got a lipstick company, I have a nail polish company, I could use a DBA for those um, those companies um, still falling under Ties Cosmetics, um, but I won't necessarily have to register my business as Ties Nail Bar, if that makes sense. Um, and if it doesn't make sense, hey guys, just let me know in the chat. Um, while you're in the chat and you're down there, you're looking around on YouTube, please hit that like button. I really, really appreciate it. I am coming to bring you a lot of content. So definitely subscribe because you'll get uh, more and more videos from me. We'll do lives. This is interactive. So if you have questions or anything like that, throw those in the chat and I will do my best to answer them. So that was step one. You want to think about this name. You want to make it as general as possible. That allows you room to grow and it doesn't reveal that you are in a um, high risk industry if you decide to take that route for your business. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on. Step number two, you got to get an address. You got to get an address for the business. And this, I mean, addresses when it comes to business has always been, I don't want to say controversial thing, but a lot of people don't necessarily understand that your home address really should not be your business address. So the home that you live in, in your house, this house here is not my business address for a couple of things. Because um, one of the major things is we call it um, piercing the corporate veil, 
right? When you set your business up, it is its own entity. If it's an LLC, if it's a C Corp, if you're looking into, um, you know, S Corp, something like that, it is its own separate entity. And you want to keep it that way, right? Because if it's not, let's just say um, something happens to you. Let's just say you, you're you're a stylist, a hair a hairdresser, or something like that. And you're doing a client and maybe, you know, she doesn't like the way her hair is. Maybe she felt like you damaged something. If she sues you and you're not separated from your business, then she can actually take your personal assets or go after your personal assets of, as well. If the judge rules that you are piercing the corporate veil, you're, you're basically blurring the line between you and your business. So one of the first ways that we separate ourselves from the business is by getting a business address something separate from our home address. And there are many ways you can do this, but the one that I always promote is to get a virtual address. A virtual address allows you um, to go, you'll go on their website, whether it's uh, Regis, um, Regis is R-E-G-U-S. Let me pull this back up. R-E-G-U-S, Regis.com. Alliance is Alliance is another good one. Or um, Opus is, is another good one as well. These companies will allow you to use different business parks or um, just different buildings or business buildings within your, your local area. And you can use those addresses. You can get your mail sent to them. If you don't want to go and pick it up from that building, they will have it forwarded to you. You can use these addresses. Now, they're going to cost some money, right? And Regis is most likely going to be the um, most expensive, but they do offer a lot of amenities because not only uh, can you use the address, but they might have meeting rooms for you to use, office spaces for you to use to go in and conduct business out of as well. Um, Alliance is going to be your in-between mid-tier um, type of uh, virtual uh, address company. And then you have Opus, which is another really, really good one because Opus actually, if you, it's, a, it's a flat fee of, I think it's uh, $90. It's a flat fee of that. And they also report to some of the business credit bureaus. So you are building business credit with Opus at the same time. The difference in between all of them, I told you, is, is gonna be the amenities, it's gonna be the, the buildings or the addresses that they actually use. Some of them you know, might not be in the best areas, some of them might be in the most prime areas, just depends on the company itself. But definitely you wanna make sure you get a business address separate from your home address. Now, if you have your own store somewhere, um, if you're not working out of your home or something like that, then yes, like if you have a restaurant, use that address. That's your business address, okay? If it's separate from your home address, use that. But for those of us who may be working, having our business out of our home, maybe it's an online business, something like that, you definitely want to get a separate business address because we are trying to separate ourselves, break ourselves away, from the business as far as it being its own entity. All right, all right. So if you have any, um, like I said, if you had any questions about that, please throw them down um, in the chat. But that is step two in building um, and setting up your business to build business credit, okay? The next thing, number three, the next thing you wanna do after you have your, uh, your business address is you wanna get the phone numbers for your business. And a lot of people don't know, but You'll need a fax number too, right? A lot of the banks out here, a lot of your major banks um, still use fax as a way to communicate and send um, and send documents and stuff back and forth to uh, to people. So you'll definitely want to have a, um, a fax number. You'll need a local number, so a local in your area number, uh, depending on where you are. I'm in Maryland, so the local area code here is 410. So you'll need, I'll need a 410 number. You're gonna also need an 800 number. OK, an 800 number and you'll need a fax number. Those are the three numbers that you are going to need for your business. Why do you need all three? Like I said, uh, the bank still use a fax number. Your 1-800 number is, is basically solidifying you as a business. And then you'll need you'll need that that local number, that local number. You do not want it to be your personal cell phone number. OK, that's what we talk about again, about separating ourselves from the business. You don't want it to be your personal cell phone number. Now, you can get all three of these numbers in one place. Right. And the one place that I recommend is Grasshopper. All right. Grasshopper. I'm going to leave links to all of these places that I'm recommending because I use them. So I'm not just recommending just because, oh, you know, they're not paying me. This is not sponsored by anyone. Uh, when I'm talking about these companies, I use them. 
I used them. I used them when I started my business. I used them to go back and correct some of the mistakes when I started my first business. I use these companies. So I use Regis. I use Alliance. I don't use Opus though, but I've heard so many good things about them. Um, um, a lot of people uh, speak highly of them. So I recommend it too, but I use Grasshopper. I use Grasshopper. I have a local number. I have a, a, a 800 number and I have a fax number for my business. Um, all of these things that you're going to need. So grasshopper.com will give you all three of those numbers for your business. And you're definitely going to want to do that. Now, what we're doing here is this, right? When you're going out and you're you're um, submitting applications for a credit card, or you're submitting applications for a loan or something like that. The first thing that you're going to do is start putting in your business information and the, the, the banker, the lender, the vendor, whomever it is that you're applying for this credit from. They are going to be looking at this, just looking over just the, the basic information, just to make sure that you are legit business. And these are the ways that we make ourselves legit. This is not a side hustle. OK, if you got a side hustle, I, I'm, I'm not against side hustles because those let us know whether or not a business can actually flourish. Right. These are businesses. When you want that side hustle to turn into a business, these are the steps that you should be you should be taking. And so when you're applying for a business loan or some or a credit card or something like that, you're saying my legit business is in a credible state for you to lend or give me money, basically. OK. So we'll have, what do we have so far? The first three things is we want a general name that doesn't, you know, doesn't reveal that we're in a high risk industry. It allows us to grow. We want a business address separate from ourselves, separate from our home address. And then we want phone numbers. We want three good phone numbers for our business. And that's a fax number. That's a local number. And that's a 1-800 number. OK. All right. All right. Let's move. Let me see who we have left in the chat here. I appreciate you guys coming through. I, I definitely appreciate all of you coming through and supporting me today. Thank you so much. Um, Tyra, uh, Autumn says, yes, Tyron, you, you have read her mind. So you and Autumn and Tyron, they are, are birds of a feather right now. They're just starting their businesses and they're trying to get more information on it. Um, Wealth Talk Productions is giving me the look and eyes. And I think I know who that is. Thank you so much for coming through Wealth Talk uh, Productions. Thank you so much. Who else we got? We got 10 plus sounds. 10 plus sounds was over with me on the mortgage uh, bosses channel. We were in the chat, you know, talking about that, that 350 K is still broke. Uh, but yes, he says the fax is ancient. Yes, it's ancient, but I'm telling you, I, 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 I stand by this. A lot of uh, major banks still use it. A lot of major banks still use fax. You will, you will, See, I mean, even some of like your medical companies are still using um, the fax machine. I know Amazon still uses the fax machine. I'm not going to tell you how I know they still use the fax machine, but they still use it. Trust me, they still use it. And I was shocked um, by it. But guess what? I was in the position to actually I was in the position to actually fax and receive the fax that they were um, they were sending me. Who else do we have in the chat? We got Mr. CKB. Shout out to Miss Biz. I appreciate you for coming over, Mr. CKB. Thank you so much for supporting me. He is another excellent content creator. Him and Tim Plus Sounds are both um, excellent content creators. Um, on Mr. CKB's channel, he is talking about the um, like some very, very like in the news uh, legal disputes, court cases and things like that. And he's breaking them down, giving his opinion on what he thinks is right. I think the hottest thing right now is, um, is either young thug and young gunner or, uh, Meg the stallion and Tory Lanez. And so he breaks these things down and gives us his opinion, his, his legal opinion. He's not a lawyer yet. He is a law student, but he's applying what he's learning onto these, uh, court cases. And he's giving us some good information and 10 plus sounds if you're ever at work, maybe you're around the house, maybe you're cleaning up for the day, maybe you are just need something just to keep you, you know, keep your spirits up down, whatever mood you're in. 10 plus sounds streams a lot of good jazz music. And I stand by this because I, sometimes when I'm at work and I'm, you know, trying to put together a code or I'm trying to do whatever at work. I turn on his live stream and it just really like relaxes me, gets me through the day. If I need something upbeat, I'll find one of his videos there. He's streaming for hours, just good, good music. So definitely check out their channel. Definitely, definitely. Thank you both for coming through um, and showing support to me today. Oh, we got another channel member. Thank you so much, Sheila Gordon, for becoming a member of 
the channel. I appreciate you. The, as a member of the channel, you, you have unlocked some free emojis there. You've unlocked some of my older content when I was a, a, a podcaster. And we're talking about businesses. We're talking to entrepreneurs within, the, um, within this space about how they started their businesses and how they're being successful in them. So thank you so much, Sheila. I appreciate you so, so much for becoming a member of the channel. I hope you enjoy the content there. She also has access to uh, my Discord that I started um, a couple of weeks ago. So you guys know my social medias got hacked and it brought down all of my, you know, all of my social medias, my Facebook, you know, my Instagram, um, all of that. And it also had brought down my, uh, our square bids, our private uh, Facebook group that we had. And so um, for a long time, for over a month, I was actually down. I just recently got it back from Facebook. They just recently found out that that wasn't me posting the things that they were posting and they allowed me to open back open back up the uh, my, my Facebook accounts and everything like that. And I believe the the uh, Square Bus, uh private group is still there, but I don't have access to that group like I want to. And I definitely want to uh, kind of pivot it off of Facebook. So if something like that happens again, I can still interact with you guys. So I've um, started a Discord. And if you could become a member of the channel, you will have access to the private Discord group where we're talking about all things business credit, how we're getting funding for our businesses, um, just different things, business credit cards, and not just the business side, also personal as well. We talk about some personal credit cards, we talk about, we talk about personal finance, budgeting, just all types of things and how we can improve our financial selves. So thank you so much, Sheila, that has, um, you have unlocked um, the, uh, the magic there. I hope you enjoy more stuff to come. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And then also, you guys, you can see she's green in the in the chat, right? So when I see the green um, in the chat for my members, I'm going straight to their comment like this one, right? She says, thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Thank you, Sheila, for supporting the channel. So I appreciate you on that. Thank you. All right. Who do we have? Who else we have? We have Robert in the house. Robert says, what's good, Ty? Hey, Rob, what's going on? I appreciate you coming through. He is a longtime supporter, probably supported me, probably was right there for my first um, live stream. So I appreciate you coming through and uh, continuing to support the channel. Uh, yep, yep. I knew that was Wally. Wally always gives me the looking eyes. Wally is another longtime supporter as well. He's coming through every single live I've had. He's come through just uh, bringing the encouragement and, and interacting in the chat. We got creditwizpro.com square biz salute. You're giving a lot of great information. I try. I'm trying. I like to the information I give. I like to um, make sure that it's correct information. There's a lot of myths going on out here, not just in YouTube, but just, uh, you know, just across the Internet, period, um, that can confuse a lot of people. And I don't like to talk about things that I don't actually do. But I've gone through this process and I want to share it with you guys. So I try to make sure that I'm giving correct information because I know a lot of people act off of the information they see on the Internet. So thank you so much, creditwizpro.com for coming through um, and um, solidifying that and supporting. Sheila says, you are welcome, and I appreciate you as well. Bless you. What else we got? Uh, Wealth Talk Production says, so where is the Discord link? So, Wally, you got to be a member of the channel. You got to be a member of the channel to get to the Discord link. And I am going to do, trying to be um, active in that, in that Discord, all, if, if not every day, at least, you know, four to five times a week. So you guys can ask me questions um, in between these videos, in between these lives, you know, um, so that you can get those answers. You don't have to wait to the next video to um, ask me a question. You can ask them in there. I'll try to answer them. And then you can talk amongst yourselves, right? We're all, um, all of us are trying to better our financial lives, whether we're starting a business, whether we're looking for, you know, just help in that arena. And I, and we all have our own different experiences. Your experience may not be like mine. So you may, you may have a different way of doing some things that um, can help someone else out. And so that's why I created this community um, on Discord so that we can really interact as a community and help each other. All right. So you got to be a member of the channel, Wally. Um, and, and that's where we're at with it. All right. 
All right. So let me get back. So what we talked about. So the first three steps in setting up the business in order to, you know, receive like, you know, maximum funding is the first thing is making sure you have a good business name, something general, something that doesn't identify you as being in a high risk industry. Right. Number two, separating yourself from the business. It is a separate entity from you. We don't want to pierce the corporate veil. So making sure you have a good business address that's separate from your home address. Now, like I, uh, like I said, you can use the home address, but you are, you are basically opening yourself up to the risk of piercing that corporate veil. So you want a separate business address and then you want separate um, phone numbers as well. So you want to make sure you have a local number, 1-800 number, and a fax number. Yes, it's ancient. I get it, 10 plus. But it is still one of those things that helps us separate ourselves um, from all the other businesses and side hustles out there, all right? All right. The fourth thing you want to do when you're trying to set your business up for that is you want to get um, a resident agent, okay? So let's talk about a resident agent real quick. Now, not all states require a resident agent. What is a resident agent? This person receives your legal mail, right? This person can be you. You can be your own resident agent. But here are the requirements of a resident agent if your state requires it. In the state of Maryland, they require a resident agent. The requirements are that you have to be available Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 to 5 to receive legal documents or legal mail, on behalf of your business, right? Now, a lot of us work. I know I'm, you know, nine to five, I am at my job. I'm not here all day long. So what happens is, let's just say someone wants to sue me and I have, they're um, coming to give me a, a, a summons or they're coming to serve me. And I put myself down as the resident agent and they come to my house, let's just say 10 o'clock to serve me. And maybe the first day I'm not there. They're like, okay, She's not there the first day. It can happen, right? Maybe the business is shut down, right? And then maybe the next day they come and I'm not there. And the third and fourth day or whatever have you. After a certain amount of time of them trying to serve you at your, at which you identify as your resident agent and they can't, you can find yourself in some legal trouble. Now, I'm not saying they come to arrest you, right? I'm not saying that. But that can be a fine, an extra fine that you have to pay in, in addition to whatever they're serving you for, right? So I say, make your res outsource that, like make that someone else. And in the state of Maryland, we have a couple of companies out here. A resident agent is fairly cheap. It only costs me 50 bucks a month. I mean, I'm sorry, 50 bucks a year. Excuse me. 50 bucks a year for my resident agent. You have a lot of resident agents out there. It can be a, um, a law office can act as a resident agent. Some of these virtual, um, the virtual companies and they are, and they are, um, the, the addresses that they have there, the business parks may have resident um, resident agents in there as well, just depending on where you live. But you definitely want this to be someone who is going to be at their at that address that you identify. They're going to be there Monday through Friday, nine to five to receive your legal documents. That is a resident agent. And yes, you can be your own resident agent, just, but you just got to make sure that you're available um, to receive your um, legal mail. Okay, so that is the, the step four. Step four is identifying your resident agent. Um, like I said, I say outsourcing it to, you know, someone else, a company that does that for you um, so that you don't have to worry about being where you need to be um, for that. That's number four. All right. Number five. Now, after you have, after you have your, your name, the address, phone number, um, and your resident agent identify, then you want to take all of this information and now you want to go to the, to your secretary of state or wherever you go within your state to file or to register your business. Okay. Now you want to make yourself le a legit entity, um, a legit recognized business with the state. That's where you'll go. You'll take all this information. They're going to ask you what's the name of the business. What's the address. If you need a resident agent, you got to identify that as well. They can ask you the phone number for the business. You want to have all of that before you go in and sign and, and pay that money or whatever have you for. Excuse me, guys. You want to have all of that before you actually go online or go to your secretary of state to register that business. That's just the easy way to do it. A lot of times we go to the, you know, we go online first, but we don't have everything that we need in order to actually uh, go through with the whole process. 
and then you're going to pay whatever fees it is to um to register your business whether it's um i think in the state i uh, don't ask me about the state of maryland right now i think it's it can be anywhere like around 250 to 300 something like that a year um to register your business so you have all that information to go there now once you've done that once you once you have um once you have registered with the state, you know, you're now a legal entity with the state. The next thing that you want to do, the next thing that you want to do is go to the feds. And when I say go to the feds, what you're going to do is you're going to get an EIN number. You're going to get your, um, your, your federal EIN number. And it's as simple. And the best thing about it, not only is it simple, it's free. Okay. And it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes at the most to get this, right? And you can get this like right now. Um, you can get this EIN number, EIN number right now. Just log, log on to irs.gov. And there's some links there that I say, if you're looking for an EIN, you do that, that all of that information that you had, you gave to the state, you then give that to them as well. And then within 15 to 20 minutes, they will issue you an EIN number for your business. Now this is important. Don't lose this, okay? This EIN number is sort of like the social security number for your business. Now, I know everyone here, hopefully everyone here, knows their social security number. You know it by heart, hopefully, right? And then you have a social security card. This is the same thing you want to have, um, the same care you want to give to your EIN, EIN number for your business. So definitely go and get that um, and hold on to those documents, right? Because you're going to need that EIN number for the next step, which is to establish your business bank account. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. You got to get your business bank account. Okay. Yes, you need a business bank account. This cannot be your bank account. You cannot use. Well, let me say you can't. You can do anything you want. It is not recommended that you use your own personal account as your business bank account. Why? Well, someone in the chat tell me why we don't want our personal money mixed in with our the money that we make from our business. Anybody can tell me that. Anybody can come through and tell me that. While while y'all get that together, let me see who else is in the chat. We got Jason in the chat. He says, "Hello, Ty. Hello, Jason. How are you? Thank you for coming." Oh, we got, you know, I didn't see my sound up today, so I can't even hit the hit my, my horns and all of that. But we got Orlando Miner in the chat, another excellent content creator. He is talking about all things real estate. You definitely need to go check out his channel. He comes with very, very good information just about the market as a whole, uh, where it is, how um, how it affects us every day. If you're, if you're in the market for buying a house or something like that, he is giving good, good advice about that. So definitely check out Orlando. The question is though, why don't we want to mix our personal money, our personal bank account with our business bank account, right? So I'm waiting for the answer for that in the chat. But while I wait for that, let me see who else we have in here. We got life lessons. He's telling me that he appreciates the knowledge that I'm giving and I appreciate you supporting. And he's in Maryland too. So I don't know where at. I don't know if you like PG County, but I'm in Baltimore, right? I'm in good old Baltimore, Maryland, living right here in the city, Baltimore City, not the county. Uh, so I don't know where you are, but but you're nearby. You can get anywhere in Maryland in about mm, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, who else we got? We got to keep it classy. Thank you so much. Keep it classy for coming through and supporting me. I appreciate you. Another excellent content creator that is also in TLA's mastermind and definitely check out his channel as well. Um, he has some great takes, some great reactions, um, just about certain things that's going on within, uh, pop culture, not just pop culture, but our culture and, and just different news things. So definitely check out, keep it classy. Thank you so much. Uh Oh, who we got? We got my good, good soror. My good girl Sora in Allen in the house. And guess what, guys? She is another. I mean, listen, I get all the good content creators on my channel. I don't know about anyone else, but I get all of the good content creators on my channel. These guys, I mean, they they push me to be better. Okay. Y'all can go back to my first live stream when I was in here shaking. I'm shaking now still, but in my first live stream, I was in there shaking. My voice is shaking and all that other stuff. These people that I'm shouting out here, 
they have made me better. They say, hey, Ty, keep going. And Alan, for sure, definitely go check out her channel. She is a pharmacist. Um, and she talks about she talks about pharmacy. She talks about true crime, things that are happening in the news right now. And she gives her take on them. If you go look at her shorts, they will make you crack what um crack up. She talks about, you know, just different things she's in, she encounters um as being a pharmacist with the customers and stuff like that. If y'all ever been to like a Walgreens pharmacy or a CVS pharmacy, and you know, you know how people act in those type of stores. Um, she was she's giving a a a, a funny take on that from the pharmacist side. So definitely go check out um in Allen. Well, is that the is that your answer, Wally? Is your is your answer liability? Is there a liability there? All right, let me get back. Let me get back. Hold on, hold on. Before I get back, though, before I get back, see, this is why I love my this is why I love my support team. Because in Allen comes through with the twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much, in Allen. She says never mix business with pleasure. Facts. I was just asking asking you about that business credit. LOL. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much, Inali, for supporting me with the super that the super chat. That makes you actually, that makes you actually the sponsor of the stream. And I don't want to forget that Maggie did come through with the super sticker. And I didn't necessarily acknowledge that at that time she was the sponsor. But I, but you came through. Let me let me let me fix my banner down here. You came through, and I'm going to make you. Uh, the sponsor of the stream. So the sponsor of the stream is the person who sends the, the highest super chat, super sticker, just the support um, to me. So I appreciate you. And Alan, you are kicking, um, kicking it off. Well, Maggie actually kicked it off. So I definitely appreciate you, Maggie. Um, I didn't give you your just due because you were the sponsor of the stream. But um, and Alan definitely came through uh, with the, the super chat. And I appreciate you with uh for that here we go there we go here we go shout her out here in the banner and definitely definitely go check out her um her channel as well save that add that there we go uh oh hold on let me hide that real quick i had some other stuff on there from last time y'all have to Y'all yeah, gonna have to excuse me on this uh, struggle stream today. I'm getting it together. It's Christmas time. I just got a nutcracker. I just got out of nutcracker season. You know, my daughter, she um, she does ballet, and um, she's been um, she's been doing uh, her her ballet school has been working on this nutcracker for the last two two you know, two and a half months. And last night was the final performance. We had two performances, one at three and one at seven. It had local news coverage and everything. And so we're done. I mean, this is why I haven't really been posting like that, guys, because every night I am out at like 10, 9, 10 o'clock at night for, for her rehearsals, bringing her back and forth. Um, I can't wait till she starts driving because, whoo. So we're just out of Nutcracker season. Thank you, N. Allen. Thank you, everyone, for supporting. I appreciate you guys. All right, so what is the answer to that? Why don't we want to mix it? Because that's another entity, another another thing can, that can be used against us when we talk about um, piercing the corporate veil and also when it comes to your taxes and things like that. It just makes it, a, just gives it a, gives your accountant or whomever you have a hard time to try to separate what you uh, what you actually use for the business and what you actually use um, for yourself. You can be, you know, accused of all types of things when it comes to mixing um, business and, and your personal finances, like money laundering, you know, um, just things like that. So you definitely want to have a separate business account. That EIN that you have that you just got and all of that information we talked about in those first couple of steps, you're going to use that information when you go to the bank and set up your, your bank account. Um, for your business and you want it to be separate. Now, what does this mean? Are you asking me, Ty, why well, can't, you know, give to my business? Like I, I'm using my money, right? So how do I account for that? You can invest in your business, right? You can definitely invest in your business and your business can pay you, right? That's the whole point of this, right? You're trying to make money, but you got to account for that. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. I'm not a bookkeeper. I'm not any of that. But what I do know is this. You have to account for those funds. And it's easier for you to do that when it's two separate accounts. 
Okay. It's easier to prove your case against it. Well, you know, whatever financial, you know, fraud that may or may not come your way. It's easy to prove your case when you have these two, uh, these two separate accounts. So definitely set up your own, set the business up with its own bank account. Hold on guys. The chat is, <laughs> the chat is going crazy because the mortgage boss just came through with the, <laughs> with the $50 super super chat and i am i am just i'm just too grateful because she too is another great content creator she is the that was the stream i was coming from right before i came to you guys um and i just want to appreciate you mortgage boss uh, between her and i she's been motivating me i'm hope i hope i've been you know passing on good knowledge and motivating her within our uh, content creation journey and i appreciate you coming through with that uh with that super chat what does it say it says thank you for pushing me out of the plane you're killing it i don't know why she keeps saying i'm pushing her out of the plane but she did her first live stream today and it was it was really really good i'm telling you guys go check it out on the replay we were talking about um someone that made three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and they were still living paycheck to paycheck and how can they do that she um, definitely gave a good synopsis on how that happens how that can happen to us and some of us are already doing that but thank you so much, the mortgage boss coming through uh, with the $50 super chat. That makes you now the sponsor of the stream today. So I appreciate that. Let me go ahead and fix this. And Alan Masora, thank you so much. Maggie, I appreciate you so much. But I got to put the mortgage boss, that's B A W S E. Um, as today's stream sponsor and y'all go ahead and big her up go check out her channel i appreciate that i really really appreciate that y'all don't understand i was whew, i was scared getting on here in the beginning and now you guys make it make it so comfortable for me and alan says maggie is always number one she is maggie i mean you're someone with the sweetest the sweetest heart i know it's it's, it's hard to say right everyone says you know the internet is not real but i honestly i honestly feel like maggie is probably one of the most genuine people you can find on youtube um if not the most genuine person and when you go to her channel maggie the substitute teacher and when you go to her channel you will see exactly what i am talking about uh oh wally was telling me to check again because mortgage boss came through I, I think that's what that was and then alice salutes that all respect all love over here thank you so much orlando orlando's laughing in the chat and then we got Uncle Stu, the old man on the block. He says, salute to everyone. Salute to everyone in the chat. He's saluting, he's saluting Orlando. Wally's he's out here saluting Uncle Stu. Uncle Stu's saluting Wally. It's a lot of saluting out here. How y'all doing today? It's Sunday. What time is it? It's 6.53. It's Sunday. And I appreciate you rocking with me today. We're going to talk about how to build, how to set up our businesses to build business credit. All right. We've already talked about the first thing is that we need to have a general name um, for our business. Something general that doesn't reveal that we're in a high risk industry if we are that. And this name allows us to grow the business. Right. We can grow the business using DBAs or whatever have you. So we have a name. Number two, we're going to get a separate separate business address from our home address. We talked about piercing the corporate veil. Number three thing that we want to do is uh, we want to make sure we have good contact information. We're going to have good phone numbers. Three of those things, three phone numbers, the fax. That's what everyone's like. What? A fax? Yes. The fax phone number, the uh, 1-800 number and your local number. You want to have those. Number four thing that we wanted to do is we want to get a resident agent someone to accept our legal mail on behalf um, of our business. And then the, the number, what is that? Five, five. We want to get, uh, we want to register with the state with all of that information. And then once the state says we're good, we're going to take that information. We're going to register with the feds and get an EIN number on irs.gov. That only takes about 20 minutes. And then after we do that, we're taking all of that information and we're going to the bank. Right. And we're going to set up a business bank account for the business. Now, here's my here's what I recommend when we talk about setting up a business bank account. I know a lot of there's a lot of online banking um, out there. That's great. They have like great, you know, no fees, 
Um, they may have, you know, great uh, intro offers and stuff like that. But the one thing you definitely want to make sure when it comes to your business banking is that your main business bank should probably be a brick and mortar bank. It should be a bank that you can walk into and shake the hand of the, the teller or or the uh, the banker in the back, whomever it may be. You want at least one of your business accounts to be a brick and mortar bank with whether it's in your local area um, it should be a local area because you want to be able to walk in right so that could be a major bank that can be a a, a a credit union within your area maybe your area um maybe your city has its own credit union doesn't necessarily have to be navy federal or anything like that right but you want to be able to make sure that, that 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 is a bank that you can actually walk into and make eye to eye face to face shake someone's hand that type of contact right and then you you know try to explore the online banking and you know take advantage of the no fees and the intro offers um, offers there. Now, why do I say that? Why do I want to be able to walk into a bank? Because personal relationships, um, in person relationships, go a long way. Okay, it goes a long way. And when you're advocating for your bank and you're out here, you're trying to get, you know, money. I'm sorry, advocating for your bank, advocating for your business. And you're trying to get, you know, money, loans and, and credit cards and things like that for the business. It's better for you to be able to go and express yourself one on one with a, a banker or a lender or something like that versus trying to express yourself to a bot on the phone or maybe in the chat online. You have a better chance of getting approved when you're talking face to face with someone when they can see you they can they, they can get the whole picture of you a lot of times when you're using online banking you're just you know you're just a uh, a sheet or a, a, a printout or something like that and they're just using what they the um the algorithm or whatever is just gonna say whether you're approved or not and that's why we're talking about making sure we're set up correctly but being able to walk into a bank advocate for your business, talk about your business, you know, show them, you know, maybe your, your business plan and, and all of that goes a long way. You're able to get a lot more done that way. And that's what you want to do. So always make sure that one of your banks that you have is a, a physical brick and mortar um, bank that you can walk into and speak to someone directly. All right. All right. Who else we got in here? Okay. Okay. All right. Black Champ, thank you so much for coming through with the $5 Super Chat. He says it's great content. Thank you so much. I hope you're getting value out of, out of everything I'm saying here today. We are walking through the steps of how to set up our, um, our business uh, for business credit. So I appreciate you, Black Champ, for coming through um, today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So now we have a bank account. We ha Our business is registered. We have an EIN. We have our bank account. Now we got to do a little uh, backtracking a little bit because we're really like a, a an official business at this point, and we got to make sure that people can find us before we start trying before we start to try and apply for any type of, of credit for our business. And the way that we do that is we want to make sure that we register our contact information, whether it's in four one, whether it's on Google, or or you know, any entity like that. When a when a a lender is looking at your application, they will Google you. They want to see if you're a legit business, right? So you got to register yourself so that you can come up um, in there, in the directory where there's 401, the white page is yellow. Um, and I know they don't have like physical phone books anymore, but these are still websites that, that are being used to, to look people up or Google um, Google business. You want to make sure that your, your business comes up. So you want to do that, right? So you'll um, register your business with the 401, register with uh, Google Business as well so that you are you have established yourself with that. Of course, you, what you're going to need for that, you're going to need the phone number, right? No, you have it, though. You're going to need your address, right? You have it, though. So those that's what you want to do next is make sure that your business is basically, basically Googleable, right? Do I pop up in, in, um, in these, uh, these searches if they're looking for my business? But there, but you know, bleeding into that a little bit is your business has to have a website. Okay. Now, not all businesses have a website. I get it. Right. And you don't necessarily need this big elaborate um, website for your business where you're, you know, things are flying at you. You can click here, go here. You're filling out forms or contact information. You can buy this, buy that. You don't necessarily need that. And let, you know, if, if you are starting a home-based business, you don't have 
you don't have to have an elaborate website. What you need is a landing page, just a landing page that talks about your business, says what it is, it has your and it has it it has your um, contact information on this page, right? Now this gives you time to you know if you want to explore different things that you can do with your website, you know you want to hire a, a a website designer or something like that. That's fine, but make sure you set up just one page, a landing page with your domain, with your business's domain. And this is the key here, okay? A lot of times you can create free web pages on, uh, what is it, GoDaddy and all this other stuff. You want to set up, you don't want to do the free thing anymore, okay? We are a legit business. You want to set up your own domain. What is your own domain? So if my business was Square Biz, then my own domain would be www.squarebiz.com or squarebiz.net, squarebiz.org, dot whatever it may have be, whatever it may be. That is my domain. It is not www.godaddy slash uh, blah, 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 slash squarebiz. That's not my own do domain. That is GoDaddy's domain, okay? So we want to go out and purchase our own domains for our business. Um, and then we want to use that to set up a landing page for the business that has just an about me, and it has just your contact information. We also want to use that to set up our business email address, okay? So there are a lot of people out here that are using the free services, Yahoo, Gmail, uh, MSN, whatever it is, right? So you might have an email address that says, um, like for me, uh, it could be squarebiz at gmail.com. That's not what we want. What we want is, let's just say, info at squarebiz.com. Dot com. We want to use our domain to sell up, set up our um, professional email address. Also, when it comes to, the e to these email addresses, and I'm laughing because I just seen one recently and I was like, I know good and dead going well. This person did not use this as their email address to like, like to use as like a professional contact, right? But you want to be professional. Now, I'm not telling you that you, you know, you can make this email address to be whatever you want. You want it to reflect your personality. That's all well and good. But think about if a banker or a lender or someone like that is lending money, think about what they're going to see. Okay. You probably don't want them to see, you know, sexy kitty, six, nine, 3000, gawk, gawk at, you know, at gmail.com as your business address right? You probably don't want that. I, I mean, I know I wouldn't want that, right? So you want to make it as professional. You want to make it as bland as possible. Nothing they can use to cut, try to discriminate against your business and not give you the funding, right? And when I say discriminate, I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, whether it's, you know, racism, black and white thing. I'm talking about like whether or not they, they take your business seriously, okay? So uh, the best way to do that is you can use general things like info at your domain.com. So it'd be like info. And that you guys can see the um, my email address is info at squarebiz365.com. Right. Or you can use, you know, maybe your first initial and last name. It can be um, that at your domain.com or um, contact at your domain.com, something like that. Something just very bland, generic, is you know, um, so, so that they can contact you. But you want to keep it professional. Now, professional is subjective, depending on your profession. I get it. But you know what type of business you want to start. You'll know the people you want to interact with. Just make sure that it is acceptable to that, to your, your business's culture uh, for that type of, of email address. All right, let me go through here one time. So like I said, you want to get your own website, your own domain. You want to get your own email address off of that domain. And you want to have a landing page once you create that domain that just has the basic information about your business. And then you can go back later and do all the, the you know, the bells and whistles on your, um, your website. That's just the basic. That's just the minimum. Wally says, do you have to be a Nate, uh, do you have to be by a Navy Federal to have service there? Since it's one of the popular credit union banks that most talk about. You do not have to be by a Navy Federal um, to have Navy Federal as a bank. You can apply for that bank online. The best thing about Navy Federal is um, that they do have brick and mortar um, uh, buildings that you can walk into and talk to people face to face. Um, so if it's not in your area, 
it's still a good bank to uh for your for your business uh to have i uh, it's one of my um business banks uh bank accounts as well but i do have navy federal in my area so i'm able to walk in and, and talk to people as needed um but you don't have to have it in your area i'm just saying that one of the banks that you have for your business should be one that you can walk into okay whether you have to if you have to drive two hours to get to one you know that's what it is but at least you can be able to walk into it. There are some banks that are strictly online. They don't have physical locations. You can't walk into them. They may have customer service. They may have, you know, a human on the other end. Um, but a lot of times you're dealing with a lot of bots and chats and, and things like that. And I don't really want to deal with a lot of bots and chats when it comes to my money. I don't know about you guys, but that's not what I'm, I'm here to do. So that, that I hope I clear that up for you, Wally, on that. Um, unconventional says she missed number four. So let's, let's try to bring it back up to speed. What we're saying is the first thing you want to do is, um, get a good name. The second thing you want to do is get a good business address. The third thing you want to do is get good contact phone numbers. The fourth thing that you want to do is, um, get a resident agent. Um, that's the one that receives your, the business's legal mail. Um, the fifth thing you want to do is register with your state. Then after you register with your state, you want to go over and get your EIN from the feds. And then after you get your EIN from the feds, you want to get a bank account. And then you want to um, now you really solidify yourself as an official business. After that, you want to make sure everyone knows how to get in contact with your business. So you'll do um, your register on 401 and um, Google business, uh, Google my business as well. Um, and any other uh, type of uh, registry or something like that that you can um, add your business to. Then you want to establish a website and a professional email off of that website because you bought you've bought that domain. And those aren't that expensive. It depends on, you know, the I guess the more uh, I don't want to say catchier. Right. But depending on what you like, I for me to buy squarebiz.com without the 365. Um, I'd be going up, uh, going up against a lot of different entities for that, right? Because Square Biz, as everyone knows, is a famous song by Tina Marie, and um, trying to buy SquareBiz.com is probably going to cost me a pretty penny, right? So I just tacked on a three sixty five at the end of that because this is all year long, um, Square Biz all year long, and that made it a little bit cheaper for me um, to buy that domain. I think um, my domain is like twelve to fifteen dollars a year. Um, that's without the email service. They're going to add on maybe another two to three dollars, maybe even five dollars for you to actually have a um, an email off of that. But that's what 20 bucks a year um, for for that. So it's not necessarily that um, expensive. It gets expensive when you want to start designing that website and making it, you know, uh, the best it can be. But you want what you're you're really eventually going to want to do. All right. So so pulling that back up after we have. Um, where are we at? Oh, yep. We had our, our email address. We got our website. Um, we established our our bank account. We need to make sure, guys, we really, really got to make sure that all of the information across all of these entities are the exact same. We want to make sure the state has the correct information and that the IRS has the same information and that the bank has the same information and that our resident agent has the same information about the business, not necessarily the same address and contact information, but they it's all of our information. Google has the, the correct information. 401 has the correct information. We got to make sure that all of this information is the same across entities because what happens? Let's just say Google has a whole separate address for what you're saying is your business. Right. And so I'm a banker and I get your, you know, I get your, your application and I'm going over it. And I say, okay, let me see, you know, let me Google, you know, Square Biz 365. And well, on here it says the address is 123 Main Street, but on Google it says the address is 1415 Law Street or something like that. Right. You don't want that. You want that. You want the information. You want your business information to be the same across the board because you will run into issues uh, with that. Just like I um, kind of acted out there for you. You want to make sure the information is the same across the board. Um, 
and that you're using the exact legal name. A lot of times we like to drop off the, um, when you're filling out an application, we like to drop off the LLC or the, the INC, the incorporate, whatever it may have you. But when you're, when you are going to apply, you want to make sure you're using your full legal name um, when they ask for that. That includes the, the LLC. It includes the INC. It includes the full legal name. Unless they say, drop the LLC, drop the INC or something like that. You're using that every single time you're going to apply for business. All right, guys, those are pretty much the steps to set the business up. That is the foundation, right? That's what you need to have before you even think about where you can go to get business credit or to get funding. That's the foundation for the SBA, the Small Business um, Administration. That's the foundation for most of your, your banks out here. This is the, the basic information they're going to want to need for your business. That's the foundation for a lot of, you know, the uh, the credit card lenders out here, a lot of your vendor or business to business um, lenders out here. That is the foundation. And a lot of us, you will be surprised. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people do not know that. They'll use their home address. They'll use their personal phone numbers um, for their business. They won't have it a, a fax um, number. They won't, you won't be able to Google them. They'll have, you know, all kinds of things wrong. I don't say wrong, but just not, just not putting their business in its best position. And that's what we're here to do. We're trying to set this business up to be in the best position. I'm going to go through the chat here because you guys are talking. I appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, today. Definitely, definitely, definitely. What do we got? Where are we at? Let me scroll over. I think I, I skipped over a few. Um, let me see if any of my members said anything. Yeah, Sheila said something down here. She said, I just tried to apply. I just tried to apply there and, and they asked for a referral code if you're not a service affiliate. I'm not sure exactly. I apologize for missing that in the chat, Sheila. I'm not sure exactly where you apply to, but I wanted to get to your um your comment there because you are a beloved member of the Square Biz channel. So thank you again for being a member. But if you could put in the chat there where exactly you were applying to, because I've said a lot. Um, and so I'm not really sure. Let me scroll back up here. So here we are. I think we're here. Let's go to Let's go to Tyron says, Tyron says, question, how long um, you use net 30s to build business credit before applying um, for friend? All right, let's go into this question and answer. We're talking about net 30s. Then there are different ways that after you've got all the basics down, okay, after you've set this business up, there are different ways for you to start building business credit. And I'm going to tell you like this, the fastest, the easiest way for you to get business credit for your business, the fastest way is for you personally to have good credit, period. That is it. You don't have to have what people are, you know, the, the Dun & Bradstreet number, the Experian business number, uh, uh, business number, the, ex, uh, the uh, Equifax. You don't have to have all of that to get business credit for your business. What you do need to have is personal credit. OK, you need to have um, good personal credit and that's the fastest way. That's where you're going to get the big, large amounts from. Right. They're going to check your personal credit. They're going to check, you know. Uh, yeah, they're going to check your personal credit, whether it's TransUnion, Experian, Experian, mostly um, Equifax. And they're going to say, OK, based on this person's history, they have a business now. All right. I will issue them a Chase Inc. business, you know, cash card or an American Express card. Or if you go to the bank, they're going to look at your, your personal credit. All right, I'll give them this $50,000 loan to start up their, you know, the new restaurant, whatever it may be. That is the fastest way. That is the fastest way. Now, let's just say your credit ain't so good, okay? Your credit ain't so good. I'm still going to tell you, you should be working on your credit. But at the same time, you could be working your way as far as like business credit is concerned. It's just, um, is the, I don't want to say it's the long way, but it's a little bit longer. And that's by using um, what they call like tiers into business credit. And one of the first tiers is the vendor accounts. Those are your net 30s, um, your net 60s, net 90. What net 30, net 60, net 90 really means is that someone um, has given you something that you wanted, whether it's, let's just say it's, um, let's just say it's a, a stack of paper. You want it, you need a paper for your business, right? They say, hey, I will give you the stack of paper 
but you owe me, you got to pay me that in 30 days, or you got to pay it to me. You got to pay it. Uh, you got to pay me for that in 90 days, 60 days, whatever that net is, that is net 30, net 60, net whatever. That's net accounts. Those are vendor accounts. That is business to business lending. Okay. That is a business because all of these companies are businesses themselves. That is them saying, I will loan to this business or I will give to this business. And then they owe me in a certain amount of days. And so Tyron asked, how long should you use that um, to build business credit before applying for funding? Well, you're actually already applying for funding with these accounts because sometimes they'll, they'll give you, you know, $2,500, $3,000, sometimes $5,000 to use that vendor credit within uh, with their business. So you're really already applying for that. Um, but I think what you're trying to say is like, you know, how long should I be using net 30s? Um, I will say you should be using net 30s until you have established at least three to six months of, of positive uh, business experiences on your business credit profiles. You have uh, Dun & Bradstreet, DMB. Um, you have your Experian business uh, credit profile and you have Equifax as well. When you can establish or you can show a history of positive experiences um, with other businesses, um, and then you have a, uh, a a DMB score of at least 80, um, that's the minimum. Um, you have uh, the Experian um, IntelliScore um, of at least 80 as well. Then I would say, okay, let me start applying for different tiers or a different tier of business credit. Now, just because you have an 80 DMB score or an 80, you know, experience score does not mean that you're ready to go and apply for Chase and American Express. You are going to have to still get your personal credit in order. This, this really, and I say this, is really no getting around that. We talk about, you know, business credit cards that don't necessarily uh, do a credit check on your personal account. But there, I mean, there's some, but they're few and far between, and they're not going to give you a lot of um, a credit. You're not going to get the high amounts that you may or may not need um, by doing that. Your personal credit is going to be what unlocks the doors for your business. You are the owner of your business. You got to take responsibility for it. So there's a lot of uh, misconceptions um, out there that you can get all of this money without basically being accountable for it, right? The no PG, no personal guarantee. That's what that means. No personal guarantee. Um, credit cards, they're out there. They are out there, but it's not that many. And you're not looking at a lot of, uh, of money when you um, when you go that route. But as you continue to build, you start to work with net 30s and, you, and you, you're triggering your, your business credit scores. At the same time, you should be building your personal credit. You should be working on your personal credit. Whatever it is you have to do, whether it's paying, um, you know, paying things off, excuse me, whether it's, you know, maybe cleaning up the information on there, whatever it is you have to do to, for that personal credit, you should be doing that. And to get the funding you need for your business, the business credit should be doing this and so should your personal credit. And as your personal credit does this, then you don't necessarily need business credit um, in that sense like that. I hope that that makes sense. But if you have a net 30s and you're doing that before you can go to the next tier, which is um, like store credit, like your office max cards, um, office max um, staples, um, these cards are store cards. And some of them allow you, if they have like a MasterCard or a Visa logo and they allow you to use them outside of the store. So Sam's Club is a really, really good one. That is a true, um, no personal guarantee. I'm not say true. It is considered a no personal guarantee uh, business credit card. You apply for it in store at Sam's. You can use that Sam's card, the one with the MasterCard logo, not the Sam's store card, but the Sam's MasterCard. You can use that card outside of Sam's Club. You can use it wherever um, MasterCard is accepted. Um, they normally start off people like around with the $8,000 um, limit on that. They don't um, do a hard or soft pull to your to your um, personal credit. But I would definitely have um, at least three months of net 30 business to business um, positive experiences before you apply to Sam's Club um, for that. 
Um, so that, that would be like next tier of, of credit cards that you can apply for. You're like, and then like your gas cards, like the BP has a master card that you can use. Um, you can use that anywhere as well. You definitely want to have some, some good um, positive history um, on that card. So I hope I, I kind of answered your question there, um, Tyron. Definitely. And you want to have people say, well, what's the amount that you should have? How many net 30 should I have? You know, you get you'll get anywhere from three to, to 10. Right. I Listen, I only have five. I only have five before I apply for Sam's Club. I apply for Sam's Club and I got it. OK, Sam's Club gave me a twelve thousand dollar limit when I first applied for them um, a few years ago. I only had five net 30 accounts. Um, if I can rattle them off, it was like Uline, Quill, um, the real basic ones. I, I talk about them on the channel as well. Um, Uline, Quill, I think I had a um, 7-Eleven gas card. I had just a couple of things. But the, the key to that, the net 30s, you want to get those net 30s that report to the business credit bureaus. There's a lot of net 30 accounts um, that don't report or they don't report to where you think they report to, right? So they're the, the three big ones, the three business credit bureaus are, you know, Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax, right? But there are more out there. There are more credit bureaus out there that some of these businesses report to and that some of these businesses use to determine whether or not uh, they'll use their prof your profile on these, on these other credit bureaus. Um, they'll use that information to determine whether or not they will... Um, they will uh, approve you. So you got to understand before you start applying for net 30s, where you want these things to report, find the ones that report to where you want them to report, and then um, have positive experience. Basically pay your bills on time. I always say pay them early. The earlier, the better. The earlier, the, be the, the, the better it reflects on your, um, your business credit profile. And the better the business credit profile, the better the score will be. All right. Wally says Maggie is good people. She is definitely, definitely good people. And 10 plus, thank you so much, sir, for, for cleaning up the chat for me. Please hit the like button, guys. If, I, if you are getting value from this, if you are um, getting it from any information, something you haven't heard before, hit the like button. It only thing it does for me, it just encourages me to keep coming back here and wanting to answer more questions for you guys. All right. So thank you so much um keep it classy says what's up 10 plus and robert paid price gives me the wave i appreciate that how you doing robert thank you so much life lessons is doing some cleaning up in the chat for me thank you please guys hit the like button i appreciate that i appreciate that it is free it is f-r-e-e -E, free to hit the like button free to hit the like button tyrone jones consider divi capital one spark or torpago they all report these cards you can use wisely versus buying mop buckets and copier paper. Black Chat, I agree with you all except for one. Capital One Spark. Um, so if you've if you seen a couple of videos or seen the video on my channel, I, I talked about my very first business credit card before I even knew anything about business credit. I didn't even know there were business credit bureaus, but I saw Capital One and they said, hey, you can apply for a business, uh, business credit card here. And I did. And when I did, they did a hard pull to my uh, personal credit, right? And not only did they do a hard pull to my personal credit, when I used that card for the business, buying things for the business, that usage, that credit card usage reflected on my personal credit um, profile. Now, what was the problem with that? Well, at that time, I was trying to buy, you know, supplies and things to help uh, flip houses and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm maxing out these cards and it made my credit card usage tank. Um, it made it made the credit card usage tank was lowered my uh my personal credit score so a couple of years ago i'm gonna say it was about 2020 maybe 2021 there was this report that capital one was no longer going to report um to the uh, report the usage to the personal um side i have yet to find someone who has a capital one card that is not reporting to their personal credit now i agree with you on divi and we'll talk about divi in a moment and i agree with you on torpago um as well 
Divi does do a uh, a soft pull to your ex your personal Experian, but they do not report the usage to your um your account. Torpago does uh Torpago doesn't do a pull. It is a um it is a no EIN um card if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. I think I said something about them before. Um Torpago as well. But they are a little bit more stricter. They are very a little bit more stricter. They are a little bit more strict on their uh qualifications um to get approved for them but divi y'all know it divi that's my card but divi made a couple of changes recently within the last few weeks last month or so and i used to always talk about the divi credit builder um the credit builder program that they had right so if you apply for a divi card and you didn't get approved then they would you know they would suggest you apply for their credit builder program and the credit builder program basically allowed you to have a um, charge card, not charge card, a uh, secured credit card um, with them where you put money on the account and you use this card just like any other credit card. Whatever money you put on the account was going to be the limit. And they would still report to DMB. They report your usage to Dun and Bradstreet and they report it to um, SBFE. OK, this is other business credit bureaus out there. Right. Um, they long they no longer have the credit builder program. They don't have it. But what they've done, and they sent the email to me a couple of weeks about this, what they've done for those people who maybe didn't necessarily qualify off the bat for a Divi card, what they have done is that they have adjusted their underwriting rules um, to basically reward those with, um, when they do that soft pull to your experience, reward those with better credit than those who may not have, you know, have as good credit. So they basically loosened up the loosen up their their underwriting um, uh, rules or whatever, right? Allowing for more people to be approved. So I've seen people get approved for as little as like two hundred bucks with Divi, right? It's a two hundred dollar credit line. It's reporting to your business credit. It helps you out whether it's five hundred dollars, whether it's a thousand. Definitely, Divi is still a very relevant uh, business credit card to have because it reports and you can double dip with um, with Divi. And what I mean by double dip is you can get a net 30 account, um, Tyron, you can get a net 30 account, pay it with your Divi card. And if that net 30 reports to uh, Dun & Bradstreet, I'm sorry, if that net 30 reports to um, Experian Business, now if you paid it with Divi, Divi is gonna report you paying that net 30 to Dun & Bradstreet and that's BFE. It's like a double dip. Now you're getting that 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 payment experience across all of the credit bureaus just off of um, one account. So definitely, definitely go and apply for Divi. I have links in the description for that. They have loosened up. I say loosened up, but that's not the, that's not what they want me to say. But it's loose. Um, loosen up their uh, underwriting procedures to allow for more people to get approved um, for for that card since they've taken away the credit building. Um, program. So definitely check them out. Miss Perfectly Imperfect. I love the name and I definitely, definitely love the avatar there of a young Felicia Rashad. Um, she says, hey, will the bank usually have an issue with you using a virtual address, address such as Regis to set up your business account? So um, what I think you're getting at here, um, Miss Perfectly Imperfect, is there are some companies I don't put Regis Alliance Opus in or in those, but like iPostal um, and things like that. There are some companies that have virtual addresses or P.O. boxes or things that you can rent out. You can't use those those companies or different um, those companies for your business banking account. Regis Alliance Opus. The reason why I like them so much is because they are using actual physical buildings. I mean, not to say these companies aren't using physical buildings, but I would say probably about 95% of the addresses that, go, that they're going to give you, you can definitely use to create your um, business bank account with, okay? Companies like iPostal, I've had, I had a personal issue with when I tried to use them because, you know, they were cheap. I think it was like 10 bucks a month, right, for this address. But then when I went to go and um, register with the Secretary of State with that, Secretary of State was like, nope, that address is not that it's bogus, but it might been it might have been like a um, 
a P.O. box or a U.P.S. store. That's what I want to say. P.O. boxes you can't use for your bank account either. But it might have been something like a U.P.S. store or just some place where they have. Um, where are the other places like that? I can't think of them right now. But you can't use U.P.S. stores and you can't use P.O. boxes and things like that. Regis, Alliance and, and Opus, I say 95 percent. I haven't had an issue. Like I said, two of my businesses, I use um, Alliance and Regis. I have not had an issue with either one of those registering for um, for a bank account. And I also um, I've heard so many people use Opus. I haven't had I haven't heard any negative feedback about them when it came to either registering your business or open up a bank account. But I postal your your local P.O. box, the UPS store, um, all of them. I've it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. And that's what I mean about making sure you set up right from the beginning, because now you got to go back like go back to these companies, get a refund here, and then you have to go back and um, cha maybe change something somewhere else that if you change something with the secretary of state, then um, then it's going to cost you money to change it, like for an amendment to your business or something like that. Uh, it's just going to cost you more money. Regis, Opus, Alliance, those are my, those are the three that I recommend um, to use because 95% of the, the um, business addresses you can use for to uh, register with your state and with the bank. Navy Federal, <laughs> Navy Federal is real popular. <laughs> Navy Federal is real popular, Orlando. That's what he says here. And Alan comes through. She says that's so true. Face to face is always better. That's just how people form relationships. I mean, don't get me wrong. We were virtual for a long time during the um, the pandemic, and so we had to adapt, right? People are still working from home during um, from, you know, everything that happened during the pandemic. But we like to like I mean, I like personal, you know, interaction. Right. We, you know, all in these spaces, there's some online dating and and all of that other stuff. That is good. If that's for you, then that is for you. But I need to see the person or uh, that I that I'm choosing to uh, date, so to speak, right? I need that in-person interaction. A lot of times you get a better uh, chance of being approved, whether it's um, for credit or whether it's for like online dating, when people meet you in person. Um, it's just it's just different. And so, yes, uh, and Alan, you are right. Face-to-face -face is always better. When you go and you talk to someone, you shake their hand, make sure you use your hand sanitizer or whatever, because um, people are nasty. Um, <laughs> But when you go, you have a better chance of just advocating for yourself. People can see you, you know, see how you are, see, you know, they can get the full picture of you. You're, you'll be able to better explain it, explain your business. Here in, in, in Baltimore, during the summertime, snowball stands everywhere. What's the snowball stand? It's like the flavor ice, right? Um, let's just say I was opening up this, you know, this big business about snowball stands. Um, I don't know if an online business... An online bank will understand the market. I mean, of course, I have to relate it to them, but I don't know if they understand what I'm doing here and how big of a market it is um, here in Baltimore City and how much money I can I can make. Um, so you definitely want to go to some place that you can walk into. So if I go to a local uh, credit union here in in Baltimore City, they may understand better. Like, oh yeah, I see those all over the place. You know. So um, yes, face to face is always better. 10 plus is shotting out. Keep it classy. I'm behind the check, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm way behind because as I am scrolling, hold on, because we had Terrell here. Terrell, thank you so much, Mr. Key. Mr. Key, thank you so much. He gives a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate that. He says, Square Business killing it. I need to get my life together and together and set up business credit. Thank you so much, Terrell. Terrell is another excellent content creator. He is a, a principal out of Missouri. So I believe he's out of the Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. He's a principal out, out there. His uh, content is, is centered around education. He reacts to different things happening within the education system, maybe just in education as a whole. Uh, he has a recent video about the incident that happened at Winston-Salem State. And the girl that got arrested in the classroom there um, that he had, a uh, you know, a good take on. So you definitely want to check out uh, his channel uh, if you are in the space. We need more black male teachers and principals and school administrators out there. So I support him 
100%. Thank you for coming through with the super chat. Um, I appreciate you, Terrell. What does Sheila say? Sheila says, I just tried to apply. That's right. I was looking for that answer, Sheila. I think she just told me, she said, I apologize. I applied to Navy Federal. And what did you say they said? The referral code? They asked for a referral code if you're not. Yes. So if you are not um, a military affiliated, Navy Federal is only for those military affiliated. If you were um, active reserve, National Guard, if you're dependent um, of that, if you're your grandfather or your grandmother, whomever, someone in your family um, was in the military, then you are eligible. But if you don't have those type of military connections, um, then you are not eligible for Navy Federal. And y'all can't see it, but let me see if I can point to it right here above my finger there. That is my beret that I haven't worn in years, but I am military affiliate affiliated. Can I put my finger down? Yeah. Listen, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. I'm trying to catch up in the chat. This is the most comments I've had in a chat in a while. So I, I apologize if I, if I skipped over you or anything like that, but thank you guys for coming out. I mean, this is, Woo! Y'all are showing your girl some love um, out here today. Let me see. Uh, that was that was Wally. He said that unconventional says she missed number four. Tyron says thank you. I appreciate you, Black Champ. How long would you recommend doing that for? I hope Black Champ was able. He said I suggest six months or so. Thank you, Black Champ. I think we said the same thing there. Three to six months. Um, Perfectly imperfect. Trying to find the best email host now, and I'm stumped. I use uh, Google. I use Google. I use Google. Um, also, uh, oh, not just Google. I use um, GoDaddy as well um, for another one of the businesses. Yep. So, but Google is a good one. GoDaddy is a good one. If y'all got some other, some other um, website hosts and um, uh, email, so people can buy, you know, purchase domains and stuff off of Wix is another one. Wix um, is an W I X. Um, please put them in the chat so that we can help each other out. Black Champ says secure business cards can turn over to unsecured cards. Excuse me, that report and not even bother with the net 30s. In my opinion, he is correct. That is that is so very, very true. I listen, in my opinion. But I know I, I know everybody's in a different state. Every, I mean, everybody's at a different place um, in that. But my opinion, if you got good credit. If you have at least, you know, a 680 or above, um, which is 680 is considered good. If you if you're looking at a seven, you know, 750 plus, you're you're great. Um, but if you have, a, you know, some good credit, you you really don't got to mess around with net 30s. You don't need to mess around with no EINs. I mean, uh, and no PG, um, not no EINs, no PG credit cards, anything like that. Because here's the thing. People don't realize that. Just because it's no PG, no personal guarantee um, credit card. And what personal guarantee is, is that you're basically co-signing for your business. You're basically saying, if my business can't pay, then I will personally pay. And so when you're looking for uh, no PG um, credit, that means that um, I don't necessarily have to co-sign for my business. What people don't understand that no PG really isn't no PG. Okay. If your business, you as the owner of the business, uh, has a debt that it needs to pay. Trust me, if, it, if you got that from a le legit like business, they will find a way to get the money from you personally. Okay. Um, and so that's why I say, if you have good, you know, credit, I wouldn't even worry about the no PG, um, credit cards because all you're talking about really as long as it's not, you know, as long as the usage and everything is not being reported to your personal account. But really, all you're talking about is a is a um, hard hard pool, and hard pools don't affect your your credit as much as like credit card usage um, will. And they'll drop after two years, and 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 really after three to like three to four months, that effect they won't have that effect anymore. It'll you know you may see your uh, credit score go down a few points. Um, within the first couple of months, and then after about four or five months, then it, it'll go right back up. Um, you do want to make sure that you're not, you know, applying for a lot of credit within a uh, a certain time period. But getting a hard pull to your credit account is not going to be that detrimental to a person. It's not. It's just not. And so um, 
you know, we're, we're going out and we're looking for no PG credit cards and, and things like that. Act as if, you know, we won't be held accountable for the debt that we incur. You will. It's just going to be a little, maybe a little, take a little bit longer. You may be in court because you're, you know, you're still trying to say, you know, this is no PG. You know, if it was a little legit business, um, they, <laughs> you will definitely, they will, they're going to get their money somewhere, somehow. Okay. So, um, Yes. Are they out there? No PG um, credit cards. But just know that no PG really at the end of the day is not no PG. OK, you will have some liability um, with that. Even if you go in and get the no EIN, you, you go on Ally and you go and try and you get a um, a car in your business name and you didn't have to use. Uh, I said, no, I keep saying no EIN. You didn't have to use a personal guarantee for it. Baby, if you do not pay that car note, Ally. That bank is coming for you, even though you didn't have to use your, your social security number for it. OK, they're still going to come get that money up out of you. They're going to re repossess that car and get what and, you know, get that money out of you. So just be we want to be um, we want to be mindful, right, of the things that our people are putting out there on the Internet. And at the end of the day, we just want to have good, solid businesses and, I, and it may be a, a tall ask when it comes to your personal credit, but one day at a time, you don't have to take it all, you know, all in at once. And I even suggest, you know, maybe holding off the business a little bit until you get your personal credit um, where you want it to be. Um, but then sometimes we need the business to help us get a personal credit. I get it. It's like a cycle. It's like a cycle. But you just want to be mindful of, of the information that's getting put out there. And I'll tell you all the time, go out. If it, you know, if it's something I said wrong, tell me in the comments so I can get it right. People were telling me, I think I did a video. People were telling me, ain't no more Divi credit builder, ma'am. Stop pushing that. Right. And that's because I hadn't checked my email when Divi emailed me and said, ain't no more Divi credit builder, but the people corrected me. And I'm and I am grateful for them correcting me because I want to make sure the information I put out to you guys is the correct information. It's 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 it won't put you in jail, basically, right? A lot of stuff, you know, a lot of people put out here on the internet, you might find yourself um in jail. So we got some we got some um got some comments here. All love, black champ and Tyrone, all love, all love. Hold on, I'm sorry, I'm skipping quickly. Orlando says, I cannot deny credit over an email address, but I will 100% ask for more verification. Yes, yes, yes. And so even with uh, being in a high-risk industry, your business being a high-risk industry, it's not saying that no one's going to lend to you, right? It's not saying that you, you know, that is the sole thing that's going to get you, you know, marked off. What it's saying is you're going to have to jump through more hoops. You're going to have to provide more information, more documentation. You're going to have to make me believe it because, you know, we don't believe you. You need more people. OK, you're going to have to give me more for me to believe in you. And so he is definitely 100 percent correct there. Right. Yeah. No, he's not going to. He may not be able to deny you based off your name um, solely or based off what he said, an email address because you, you know, you sexy got got three thousand, whatever. Right. But he's going to be like, well, hold on now. This is the email address, but you know, this is the business. I'm going to need a little bit more. I'm going to need a little bit more information. Like I just need to make sure that this is a solid, this is, this is a solid investment, right? If I'm at the bank, they are, you basically, you're basically asking them to invest in your business. Give me money for my business so I can go off and make my millions. So he's definitely right on that. Um, Tyron, not Tar. Yep. Yeah, Tyron's. I hope I'm saying that right. Like Tyron, Tyrone, you didn't have the E, so I, you know, so hopefully Tyron is it. I will call you Ty, but I'm Ty. You, could, I just call you Ty. It's, it sounds better for me. Um, Wally says, "Okay, great. Yeah, I hear you. I hate dealing with the bots, um, guys. I had a, I had a time with the Facebook bots. Facebook does not have a customer service, so me trying to get my accounts back up." But that's okay. I dropped some bombs on him and I got that account back. It says, um, Black Champ says, I had to put some respect on your name. Thank you. I appreciate that. You did that for Tyron. Bless you, dog. Thank you, unconventional one. I appreciate you coming through. 
and 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 being here and interacting in the chat with us. Thank you so much. I hope you got some value out of this. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila. She says, I just tried to apply. We talked about that one already. Uh, Black Chip says, I have a website, but I could not find it when I Google. How can I fix that? Anybody but a dead body. Anybody but a dead body. Yes. <laughs> I hope ain't no dead bodies out here answering. That'll be that'll be too much. Um, I have a website, but I cannot find it when I Google. How can I fix that? Anybody? But what about the is is the website attached to your business? Can you are you um trying to Google your business and the website isn't coming up? Maybe um in that listing. Um, just making sure. So let me see something, guys, because I know that the address has changed real quick. So you want to go to Google and you want to uh, put in Google business profile um, and they will take you through the steps of listing your business on Google. And, and within that, you are going to um, attach your website, put it at all in with your business information. So that'll help you. There, Google is if you have for your your address. They're going to send you like a little postcard for you to confirm that that address is actually the business um, at um actually the business address. So they'll send the postcard, physical postcard to that address. You'll get it. You'll go back to Google, type in whatever code they give you, they gave you. Uh, and that confirms that that address is, um, is the, uh, the address of the business. So I hope that helps, um, when it comes to, to that, um, black champ. Tyron says, so if your personal credit isn't as good, then what? That's my issue I'm facing right now, unfortunately. And I, like I said, I understand. And yes, you'll want to, you know, try to, you know, get credit through the uh, the net 30s if there's something there. Um, I think Black Champ referenced before about, you know, buying a bunch of toilet paper and all that other stuff. But if it's something within there that you can buy um, for your business, you definitely want to do that. And you just want to work yourself up. Uh, Sam's Club. Is a is a card that doesn't necessarily check your credit. Torpago doesn't check your credit. Divi does. It does a it does a um a soft pull to your Experian. Um, but they have um kind of loosened up their um underwriting there. So um you may be able to um, qualify for a credit line with them as well. Um, <laughs> never mind you answer that. Here I go. Um we got we got people coming through the chat. Terrell, I appreciate you for that. And you know, in Al, uh, not in Al, I'm sorry, the mortgage boss is the sponsor of the stream, guys. She is definitely the uh, the sponsor of the stream. I don't know why I didn't have that sitting there scrolling through. I don't know what's going on with me. Struggle streaming. I apologize. I'm getting used to it, though. Next time, I'm going to have some sounds for you. I had them before, but they was acting up on me. But I'm going to have the sounds for you. Um, send, if you're sending super chats, super stickers, you're becoming members. I got sounds for you. I got them all queued up. Okay. Debt Free Dad was in the building. Is he still in the building? Debt Free Dad came through my last live, the live that I lost my voice on. He was coming through dropping knowledge. He is a lawyer. He, I want to say he's out of D.C. He's um, dealt with like financial crimes. He was giving, dropping a lot of gems in the chat. Um, so I appreciate Debt Free Dad. If I missed you and you're not here anymore, my apologies. I am behind in this chat and I'm trying to, and I'm trying to catch up. I apologize. Um, Sheila says, however, if someone else, you know, family friend has an account, you can use their referral code. So if your family member is in the military, then yes, they can, uh, then you can, um, use their, uh, affiliation to the military to get in a, um, to get a, uh, Navy federal account. Here's the other thing. It's not necessarily illegal, but I don't necessarily like the pumping that much, but it's not illegal. If you live with someone you let's just say you and you know maybe it's your your boyfriend girlfriend whatever have you you guys are cohabitating and they are in the military then you they were they are able to um to uh let you be uh you, you're able to use their affiliation to the military to get um a uh, uh a navy federal account now i don't like pushing that one because a lot of people use that you like to use loopholes to get what they want i'm just giving the information that is not illegal for you to be cohabitating with, you know, your 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 partner, and they, you know, allow you to get a Navy Federal. That that space isn't illegal, but a lot of times people use that and take that to where it to you know take that. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I mean. Um, 
Someone says, iPage allows unlimited email addresses for your business. So you check them out. I don't know too much about iPage. I got to write that one down. Um, who is that? Sherilyn? I got to write that one down and check that one out. I don't know too much about um, iPage. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Black Champ says, TLA sent him. So thank you. I appreciate you coming through. Y'all probably see me over there on, on TLA. Um, I don't come up with a lot of people's channels. I definitely don't cam up. Uh, on a lot of people's channel uh, channels too much, but um, but I came through over to TLA, who I appreciate so much. Um, uh, I am in his mastermind. A lot of the content creators you see in the chat um, here are in TLA's mastermind, and we are learning so much on a weekly basis. Not, um, I mean, not just from him, but from uh, from other people within this group. If you are a YouTuber, if you're a content creator, and you're trying to like level up. I definitely say. Join this man's mastermind. When it comes to live streams, listen, he's like number one in the game, right? This is why I'm trying to do live. So I'm trying to, you know, trying to get like him. Definitely want to join um, his mastermind. Come check out his channel. Um, if he's a, he's a, well, he's a retired lawyer, 20 year uh, family law attorney. And he's definitely helped me over these last few months. And I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I appreciate the people in the chat here who have, um, who are from the mastermind and came to support me. This is, you just don't know how, how much I appreciate you guys, but definitely, um, I went over there one night and, and the chat blew me up, but y'all know, I don't care about the chat like that. Not you guys though. I love you guys. I love my chat. Everybody else is shat. No, I'm just playing. But um, definitely, I appreciate you coming through, uh, Black Champ, um, coming through from uh, TLA's channel and supporting me. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, Terrell Key, standing, sir. I'm not sure where that came from. Hold up. Oh, hold up. You are in the right spot at Black Champ. She is one of the most talented people in our mess. Terrell, I appreciate you, but you, you got, I, listen. I'm taking from y'all. Like, I am, like, learning from y'all. I know we got a meeting um, coming up here soon, but I look forward to it. I have not missed one um, meeting because I look forward to this the, the interaction. It's the same thing I talk about when we talk about business credit and when we talk about being in the private group, the private um, Square Biz um, Discord group, is that people just helping people. Right. I don't have all the answers. I'm listen, I ain't sway and I don't have all the answers. I can only give you my experience. I can tell you what worked for me. I can tell you what worked for other people. And when I say other people, these are people that I know, not just like I'm looking on the internet and you know, taking I'm telling you what works for. I just tell you what works for me. And hopefully it works for you, but we're all different. Um, and so the mastermind is the same. You know, everybody has their own different genres, their own different um, pages, their own different strategies, and we try to help each other. And that's what we want to do here in this community is help each other. All right. So tonight, y'all, tonight, what we talked about, we talked about setting the business up, getting it in the correct position to start applying for business credit. We talked about making sure that your name, um, the name of the business is something that can be, you know, scalable and you don't necessarily want to tell on yourself, right? So, um, so if you, like I said, you don't want to tell yourself that you're in a high risk industry. Um, so you want to make sure that the business name is a little generic Well, because we can also use DBAs out here. Right. So, um, even though it's generic, doesn't mean you can't get specific sometimes. So good business name, you want to have a good, uh, business address, but it's not the home address. We're separating ourselves from the business, right? We already gave it a name. It's, it's got its own name. It's going to have its own address. OK, it's going to have its own contact numbers. Right. It's not the, it's your, the business contact number is not your cell phone. Uh oh, Brandon. OK, you don't want I'm not, I'm not taking business calls on this phone. OK, they may be forwarded to that phone from the business, um, the business number that I have. But that ain't it. Not that phone. Um, what else do we say? Jesus, I, I got to go through again. Um, so we got the business phone number. We have a resident agent. They are taking our legal mail. Someone comes to sue you and they need, you got to be served. The, uh, the resident agent takes that. Just think about if you were doing hair in your salon, right? And you put yourself down as a resident agent and you're in there, you know, um, doing somebody's, I don't know, 32 pieces, something like that. If y'all know what that is. 
Don't worry about it. But let's just say you're in there doing somebody's hair or you maybe you're barbering, you're cutting someone's hair and then someone comes in and serves you with a, a, a notice to be in court on a certain day. How professional is that? I might be looking up at her like, girl, they just they trying to sue you for what? What did you do to her that you might end up doing to me? So you don't want that stuff coming directly to you. You want it to come to someone else. So that's the resident agent. The resident agent takes your legal mail, right? Protects, you know, kind of protects your business. Um, register with your state. Get your EIN number. Get your bank account, uh, your business bank account, separate from your personal bank account, okay? Get your website, your email address. Um, make sure all of the information that you have is correct for every, it's on. It's the same and it's correct across the board with all entities. Google your, uh, um, sign up for Google My Business, sign up for 411, all of that. Okay, guys, we're going to keep going, but I'm, I got I to gotta end it soon. But I'm going to keep going through these, uh, these comments. You got questions, please just throw them in the chat. I will pull people up tonight, but I'm leaving soon. And I, and I, once I start, you know how I told you that face-to-face, -face, that interaction, we'll be here all night talking about this, but I promise I'll come back and I'll start pulling people up. And you can come up here and talk to me. Ask me whatever you want. Like I said, I don't have all the answers, but I know somebody that knows something about it and they may be able to point you in the right direction, okay? Uh, Who we got? She's uh, Terrell. Okay, Normandy was... Oh, y'all talking about stuff in, in, in St. Louis. Okay, I see. Between Orlando, Terrell, and Unconventional, they were talking about the Lou. I don't know much about St. Louis. I used to live in Missouri for a little bit. Um, I don't say I don't know much. I got my master's from Webster University out of St. Louis. So I guess I do know a lot more than I'm putting on. And the fact that I used to live in Missouri, but I did not live in St. Louis, but I would always drive to go to school um, to take classes in St. Louis at Webster. So I'm here for the loop. I'm from the loop and I'm proud. I don't know what happened to the um, St. Lunatics. Okay, I'm leaving it alone. All right, let's let's stay on track. Let's stay on track. Um, Black Champ, that what website did you build your website on? Okay, so we're helping each other out in the chat. Oh, we got a Black Champ. Thank you so much coming through with the two dollar super chat. I appreciate you again. Thank you so much. He says thank you, young lady. I definitely definitely appreciate you, Black Champ, for coming through. Um, like you said, from TLA's channel, coming through, checking me out, showing support. You've been active in the chat. You've been helping other people in the chat as well. I appreciate you. I definitely definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for the two dollar super chat. Thank you, man. Y'all up. I appreciate y'all today. Y'all really made my Sunday. Listen, coming out of nutcracker season last night. Whew. Okay. It's been a long two and a half months when I'm um, dealing with uh Tchaikovsky's uh nutcracker. I'll tell you that much. It has been a long two and a half months. Terrell says he used Wix for his website. I've used Wix before as well, Terrell. Um, Arthur says, make sure you also add the website to all of your business social media pages. This way it will show up in search engines when the site is crawled. Yes. So with the, um, your SEO and all that other stuff. Yes. You want to put all of that information. If you're making a social media business page, but it's Facebook business, IG business. Um, I don't know if TikTok has a business side. I'm not sure. YouTube, all of that. Make sure all of your information is, is the same and it's out there. Right, it's out there and it's public. So when I Google Square Biz 365, which you won't because Square, Square Biz 365 is not my business, but soon come. Um, but um, when you do that, you want to be able to um show up in the um in the uh the search there, like number one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll down here because I got I got I got somebody famous in my in my chat. You know, I got like somebody like incredibly famous. That is AV to the seven power has um, blessed me with the super chat. Thank you so much, AV. She says, go square, bud, go. I appreciate you, uh, AV, so much coming through. I did a, um, I did a collab with AV uh, a couple of months ago. I thought it was one of the, it was so great. I was, first of all, I was honored that she even asked me to do a collab because I hadn't done a collab with, um, on the square biz side i've done podcast collabs but i hadn't done a collab since i i started this channel um a little over two years ago no one's ever asked me to do a collab and she asked me and i was too honored um to do that with her so we were over on her channel we were talking about 
all things personal finance over there. Um, and I had a really, really good time. TLA actually came up so the lead attorney came up and then um, uh, the intentional millionaire came up as well. It was a good four four people on there. We were talking about all kinds of things. Um, so it was so, so good. But you guys got to check out AB to the Seven Power and her channel. She is a law student as well. She is breaking down, um, uh, uh, I think, was it court briefs? Or she's breaking down all the things that's in the court, legal situations that are in the in the news. She's breaking that down. She's giving her opinion on them. She just did a, a live stream. Was that last night, A.B.? Um, she was talking about Tory Lanez and, and Megan Thee Stallion. You guys got to check that out. She did an eight-hour stream with TLA the other day on um, Young Thug and, and, and Gunna. I don't know how you can do it for eight hours. That's like Hillary Clinton being questioned about Benghazi type numbers over there. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. But she is an excellent, uh, very, very good content creator. Thank you so much, A.V., for the um, for the super chat there. I appreciate you coming through. Always, always um, coming through with me. So thank you so much. All right. All right, guys. All right. So, guys, I think let me let me let me go through some, some more of these comments here. I apologize. Did you purchase your URL through Google? Um, I think that you guys are just talking back and forth um, in the chat. AB says, shout out to that illegal advice. Nope, nope, we're not shouting that out here. You can get that somewhere else. <laughs> I give strategies, I don't give hacks. It's a difference, right? People are hacking, and that's cool. Um, but I, I like to give sh what I call strategies, strategies, and they're not illegal. All right. What we got, we have Sheila down here. She says, so what number exactly is it you, is it you utilize for the family member that is military? So what, so what happens, um, uh, with the referral, um, Sheila is that person that's in the, um, that's in the military. I can't. That, that person is in the military is going to do, and I've never done it, so I can't really speak on it intelligently like that, but I kind of know the gist of it is that they will um, contact Navy Federal. I don't know if they can, I don't know if it's over phone or whatever have you, um, and then give your information. And then that allows you to, then the Navy Federal will send you something um, and then it allows you to go in and um, apply uh, that way. I think that is the way that works. If someone knows better in the comments, please let, let her, um, let her know, but I've, I've never had to refer anyone. So I don't, I've never had to go through that process. So I can't really speak that intelligently on it, but that's sort of like the gist of it. They go to Navy federal on your behalf and the Navy federal, um, reaches out to you. Um, and then you have to show like, like if you're cohabitating with someone and you, that's your, you know, your spouse, your, well, not your spouse, but like, you know, your boyfriend or whatever, someone that you're cohabitating with, there's some, some minimum guidelines for that as well. Right. So it's not just like we moved in yesterday and, and, and I can get on. I think there are some minimum guidelines um, as far as addresses are concerned and how long you guys, you guys have been together and what the actual relationship is um, for that. Uh, what are we saying here? Terrell says, A.B., we need that illegal money. See, look at that. All right, I'm about to shut the chat down because y'all going to get me, y'all going to get me flagged. Um, okay. Um, East Boogie Bud, Bezzy, to Love Record CEO, East Boogie. I'm not sure what, what reference that is, but thank you for coming through. Bud, Bezzy, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming through today. Um, A.B. says, she loved Nelly in high school. Me too, girl. I was a St. Louis six. I, you know, I... I I I love St. Louis things. I love Nelly. I loved um uh Jesus. Why did they just Murphy Lee, Nelly, Kiwan, um Ali? I love them all. Okay. I love the St. Louis said the lunatics broke up. Man, Kiwan, where you get in those colors? Are you dying them? Y'all remember that Air Force One song? All right, so uh Tyron says since Dibby doesn't have the credit builder card anymore. What other credit builder cards do you recommend? How do you feel about the Tilful? I love the Tilful card. Tilful is a secured um, credit card. I have one. When I um, when I try to suggest credit cards and stuff to you guys, give me a second. Let me get my purse up here. I try to suggest the cards that I actually have. Um, I say try, but for the most part, all of the cards that I've suggested, I actually have. 
them until four was one that I went through the whole process just so that I can come back here and intelligently speak on it with you guys. Do I have it in my other purse? Y'all, I'm part. I apologize. I think I might. Hold on, let me see. Something. I think I might have it in my other. Anyway, I have it, and I and I like Tilful because they not only do they have the um the credit card, it is um no PG. They do market it as a no PG, but it's really a secured card. So you're gonna have to give the money, and they'll put that on there, um right. But that um you use it as a credit card, you'll pay on that, and they report that um they report those payments to the credit bureaus for you, helping you build your um. The, help me you build your business credit. So yes, I do like the Tilfo card. Not only that platform also has um, other little things that you can get on there just to help you as a business owner, period. Um, just to help you as an entrepreneur. Um, you can, um, what was that, Divi? I think, no, Divi. So Divi will um, track your expenses for you. Um, so we were talking about accounting and, and CPA and making sure everything is separate. Div Divi will definitely attract your, um, your expenses for you. So between Divi, I would just go ahead and, and apply for Divi, um, as well. Like I said, it, it is a soft pool. Soft pool does not affect the credit, does not affect your credit, but I would, um, I will apply for them. I would definitely apply for Tilful as well. Um, and then, um, you can grow with Tilful. Okay. Analysis, that nutcracker practice every day and long, the closer you get to the show. Whoo, child. See, you feel my pain in Allen. Whoo. Okay. We talk about long on Friday, this last Friday, which was the day before the show. Um, Friday, we, it went from five to 10. Okay. I don't have no life. I don't have a life when it comes to um, nutcracker season. That nutcracker is serious and they are serious about it okay but anyway let me but thank you yes you can feel my pain when it comes to nutcracker season that is every year all right black champ says good looking out fam um terrell sanders says ion's website domain email two dollars for the year that's another one i haven't heard of so thank you to um terrell for coming through and sharing that information so you guys check that out ion's website two dollars for the year Two dollars for the year, so check that out. I'm gonna have to check that out just to make sure that you know. I might not. I might need to switch over. Yes, AB, the collab was fire. It was. It was. We had a lot of people in the chat that day, so um, I appreciate you inviting me on your channel. I, I was. I was definitely honored. Definitely honored for that. Shout out to AV Unconventional One says, uh, and then she thanks her right back. And then TLA and AV was on live stream, hunger strike for eight hours. They were on for so long, y'all. So long. They were covering, it was live coverage of the um, Young Thug uh, trial there. It was, whew, I was at work. I was at work. I caught, I caught a little bit on my lunch break. I wanted to leave and go home just so I could finish and watch the rest. When I got off work, they were still on. They were still on. I don't know if I could do it. To sit in this chair and talk to y'all for eight hours. I don't know, but they did a good job. I promise you, they did a good job. So I appreciate them. That's how we learn. I, I learn every single day when I see these two. Terrell, um, Terrell says, I thought at AV to the Seven Power had a nickname for Square Biz. I would have just rolled. <laughs> you know what? Let me tell you something. And Allie come through the, uh, every time she says, uh, well, she says, right? Like I, she doesn't say it. But when she writes it, she always writes uh, AV7. Like AV said, it's a never mind. Let me, I'll leave it alone. But I, I recognize it in Allen, and I every time I see it, that's how I say AV's name. When I say AV7, I say just like the AV7, Sam, Sam is real country like, but she's down here in the south though. So, um, Keisha Johnson, it's on their website, call and ask. I'm not sure what she's referring to, but it's on their website. So, call and ask. Y'all heard her, Murphy Lee, Ali. Yep, those that's St. Lunatics. You know all of them. I do. I'm telling you, I used to thicky, thicky, thick girl. I don't, we won't get into that. That was that was in my yesteryears. All right. <laughs> um, uh, that's all that money in that purse holding it down. No, that's not money in there. I promise. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. It's December. I just told y'all nutcracker season. I just got off, got out of, and um, it's Christmas season. Oh, I'm broke. It's the end of the year. All right, all right. 
Sheila says, thank you. Thank you, Sheila. I appreciate you. Sheila, Sheila joined the, the channel membership today. So like I said, the, you know, the channel, the, the membership is only 99 cents and she joined today. So I appreciate her for that. Thank you so much, Sheila. What you get with the membership, you get access to my old podcast. I do not have them listed on YouTube anymore. She gets access to them while I'm talking to, along with my my um, my co-host, Silver. Um, we are talking to entrepreneurs um, in different sectors and different businesses, and they're talking about how they got started, how they are um, building their businesses, getting getting to the bag. Um, so she has access to that, and she has access to the um, the Discord group. She has access to uh, emojis um the that i that i uh, made for the channel so she can use them um in here if she likes um she has access to all of that as a member only 99 cents from square biz so i appreciate her that was easy to do and if you don't have 99 cents that's fine that's fine you can just hit the like button for me because that's free f-r-e-e free hit the like button if you got some value out of this you know today i'm about to shut it down in a few minutes but i appreciate everyone coming through and like i said if you did get some value out of this content you if i answered some questions for you if i clear some things up for you i appreciate you allowing me to answer that for you go ahead and click the like button for me if you really really like me and you're not a subscriber yet please go ahead and subscribe, subscribe to the channel because I will be putting out this content, especially with the new year coming up. I got some goals that I got to get this information out to you guys because you ask me that, you ask me in emails, you ask me in the comments, you ask me a lot of questions and I want to make sure that I'm answering them because I, just because, you know, you may have the question, but it might be, you know, 500 people out here in the, in the YouTubers that has the same question as well. So I appreciate you guys. All right. All right. We're going down. Uh oh, help. Come on, hold up. Tyron says, how is it compared to Divi? I hope I answered that question, Tyron. But I appreciate, listen, guys. I got like the best, like, like peers. I got like the best, like just, oh my God. AV, thank you so much for coming through. YouTube, uh, new YouTube member. You and guess who's right behind you, Terrell. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys coming through and being, I'm just going to go back and forth between the two of you guys. Boom, boom, boom. I appreciate you guys coming through and um, showing support and becoming members of my channel. I appreciate that I'm growing over here and you guys are just helping me out. Members of the channel. As you know, I go straight to the comments of the members of the channel because they are the supporters of the channel. I go straight to their content. They show up green in the chat. They are priority to me. I love everybody. But when you support me, I love you more. I love you more. So thank you so much. Square Biz with the big two-hour stream. Has it been two hours? What time is it? We got to go, don't we? Oh, no. I'm on here. Oh, man. And Alan coming through with the man. I'm going to cry right here on the stream. Thank y'all, man. Come through. Membership. Thank you so much. And Alan, Terrell, AV to the seven power. Sheila put it down. Uh, Road Runner Drake put it down last stream, gave um, became a member. You guys get access to all of what I just said. You get, I get, you get the emojis that I made, right? I made those. You get um, access to the Discord. You get access to some old podcasts that I did back in the day before I was doing this whole, well, this whole YouTube thing, right? So you get to see what I look like, you know, during the pandemic, struggling, right? And um, yes, I appreciate you guys. And I'm going to put out some more members only content as well with only the members of the channel can get access to that or they'll get access first. Um, it, it depends on how that goes. So I appreciate you guys coming through and, and supporting me on that. Tyron said, yes, you did answer the question. Good. I'm glad you got some value out of it, Tyron. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you to my thank you to my team, to my crew. This is crew. This is crew. Ain't nobody mm -mm, with my click, click, click. Okay, all right. Avi says hit the like button there. And Alan says, yeah, I got that 99 cent. I appreciate the 99 and a half won't do. It's Sunday. And 99 and a half won't do. But that 99 cents go a long way on Square Business Channel. So I appreciate y'all. Terrell says get them likes up. And um, he says, yes, yes, yes. Black Champ, thank you so much for coming through on the membership. Are y'all just messing with me right now? Are y'all like, y'all just, 
Man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Black Champ, coming through in the membership. Thank you so much. And right behind you, unconventional one. <sighs> yeah, thank you so much. I hope I'm providing value. I hope you are getting your 99 cents worth um, by becoming members of this channel. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate that. Membership, yes, Terrell. Membership has its perks. Membership has its perks. And I promise, I hope I can provide those perks to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Man, I... Today was a good day. I don't, me and Ice Cube were on the same wave today. Today was a good day. Sheila says, would anyone have information on how to best purchase restaurant equipment economically? Oh, what is it in my head? Sheila, I had a website for you. Sheila, I'm going to come back. Um, I'm writing it down. A credit card, business credit card that you can get. And I can't even think of the name of it right now. Strict, um, and it's it's and it's particular for people trying to start um, a restaurant and to get their equipment and stuff like that. And I I apologize because I can't. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it right now. If someone else knows exactly what I'm thinking about the um, credit card, um, oh, I can't. It's it's it's, it's specifically for restaurant equip, equipment, and I believe. Some other things as well. And I believe they have it either with the Visa or MasterCard local where you can use that card outside of that um, particular business. But what I'm going to do is when I when I end this stream, I'm going to come back tonight and I'm going to find out, you know, what it is because I forgot. But I'm going to come back tonight and answer your question in the comments on that. And that'll help you purchase your um, restaurant equipment. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you. And then um, Terrell says, now nah, we here. Uh, a black chance says group economics. Let me tell you, yes. Um, that used to be, I used to talk about this a lot. This, we, I, don't, I don't think you can do that, that, um, this much anymore. But back in the day, remember, you used to, I used to always say, like, oh, we can get better group, econo uh, group economics. And the way I was using that, I'm talking about like years ago, is that I would share my, my Netflix account and like my, my, like my sling and all of, all of those types of accounts and I give them to everybody. And we were just all like, Hey, if you got Netflix, give me your, your password. If you got, you know, HBO max, give me that password. Everybody will have everything off of like one account. I don't think you can do that anymore, but that was my vision of group economics. I appreciate you black champ for coming through um, on that. Unconventional session. We are appreciative, uh, appreciative of you. And I appreciate you, Unconventional and Allen, with the hand clap. The round of applause, baby. Make the hands clap. The hands clap. Appreciate you. Um, OMG, I went to YouTube listening to one channel and Square Up popped up. I'm so thankful. I listened to you. Took notes while cooking. Yes. What you cooking over there, Sheila? Because I'm hungry. Where's Maggie at? I know Maggie got something. I know she cooked something today. I appreciate you coming through earlier, though, Maggie. I appreciate you. No More Gluttony says, No More Gluttony became a member. Thank you so much. No More Gluttony. No More Gluttony. No More Gluttony. I would definitely, if, it, if, that's, if that's a, I don't know. but I don't know what the meaning of that is other than Maggie, the substitute teacher, has a bomb cookie channel. A bomb cookie channel where she substitutes um, uh ingredients in like you know very popular dishes um out with more healthier ones um and the food is good so definitely if that no more gluttony is in, if it's in that that realm or whatever definitely check out maggie the substitute teacher here on um youtube but i want to tell you thank you for becoming a member of square biz you are a part of the community once i get my sounds back up y'all i'm gonna be i'm gonna be lasering people bing, bing, bing. i'm gonna be giving y'all the horns and, and bum, 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 whatever. I was thinking about using the same horns from um, Love Don't Live Here Anymore. I think it's a laser though. Boom, 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 boom. But I don't want to get tagged for a copyright. I'm just rambling right now. But when I get my get my sounds and everything together, think, uh, I will definitely be using them more. Thank you so much, No More Gluttony, for becoming um, a member. I hope you're getting value. Black Chim says, nah, that was not. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was. So, I mean, you can't do that anymore, though. You can't do that anymore. But it was. I mean, we passed around those uh, those uh, logins. But I am not suggesting that to anyone. 
that is not um yeah i ain't suggesting that right now you can't even do it anymore like that she 